Royal Enfield have recently launched the Scram 411 in Australia. It's a road-focused, adventure-style bike that takes its engine and chassis directly from the Himalayan. Now, Royal Enfield say that it's a multi-purpose tool, optimised for agility and alloy that's always ready for whatever life has in store. This is no cosmetic crossover or pumped-up street bike. This is a brand new subspecies. Now, I've got to be honest, I have absolutely no idea what that means. It just seems like a heap of marketing mumbo-jumbo. But what I do know is that the Scram 411 is a cracking little bike that's simple and affordable, and in my opinion, it's better than the Himalayan in pretty much every way. Let me show you why, because it's time to Scram. At the heart of the Scram is the same 411cc single cylinder, four stroke, air cooled, single overhead cam engine that's found in the Hemi. Now just a note, I'm gonna do the Aussie thing here and shorten pretty much every name we ever hear. So from now on, it's the Hemi. It's got fuel injection and it puts out a moderate 24.3 brake horsepower at 6,500 RPM with maximum torque of 32 Newton meters at 4,250 RPM. And it's got a five speed constant mesh gearbox. It has the same half duplex split cradle frame as the Hemi and a 15 litre fuel tank that's good for just under three and a half litres per 100 kilometres. The brakes are a 300mm disc with a two piston floating caliper on the front and a 240mm disc on the rear with a single piston floating caliper, both with dual channel ABS. And for the power of this bike, the brakes work just fine. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit different from the Hemi. In terms of suspension, there are 41mm telescopic forks with 190mm of travel as opposed to the 200mm of travel on the Hemi. So it's not a massive difference and there's still plenty of travel. And on the rear, there is a monoshock with 180mm of travel. Ground clearance is 200mm and it has a seat height of 795mm. By way of comparison, the Hemi has 220mm of ground clearance and a seat height of 800mm. So the Scram is only 5mm shorter, probably because of the much more padded seat. The extra padding is pretty good and it does make the seat feel more comfortable, at least initially. The two biggest changes are the weight, 185 kilos versus 199 kilos dry, so a substantial 14 kilograms lighter. And the wheels with a 19 inch spoked rim on the front versus a 21 inch. It also has a 17 inch on the rear and both wheels are wearing fairly good dual purpose Seat tires. And I must admit the Seats on this for me were absolutely fine both on and off road. It comes in seven colors, graphite red, blue and yellow, as well as white flame, silver spirit, blazing black, and the model I had in skyline blue. And the price starts from $8,240 right away. Well, plenty, starting with the styling. One of my biggest complaints about the Hemi is that in the looks department, it looked like it had been beaten with the ugly stick. But on the Scram, it's all been stripped down to the essentials, and in my opinion, looks-wise, it's much better for it. The clock and the headlight configuration look nice and really well designed. The tail and the seat of the bike look great, and the tuck and roll style stitching on the seat looks the part, as does the tail light and the rear guard. Also, on first appearance, the seat is much more plush than the Hemi, but we'll come back to that. I really like the range of colours, in particular the white flame version, as well as the one that I had in Skyline Blue. They are simple, but interesting to look at. The blacked out engine looks good and will help in keeping the bike clean. No polishing like you have to do on the Classic 350 and the 650 Twins. The stripped back bodywork all looks good and it really suits the Urban Scrambler vibe of this bike. The clock configuration is nicely designed and it doesn't look like an add-on. And it's got all of the essentials like a gear indicator and a fuel gauge. Although, because it's so economical to run, you're going to be needing to take a break well before you run out of fuel. The headlight shroud is a nice touch that pays homage to Royal Enfield's history, but also looks thoroughly modern. It's well designed and manufactured. Yes, it's plastic, but on this urban scrambler type of bike, it just works. Easily my favourite thing about the Scram 411 is that 19 inch front wheel and the 14 kilogram weight reduction compared to the Hemi. It means there's more weight on that front wheel, it's more agile and therefore it handles better on the road. And in my limited experience off-road, it didn't feel like handling and comfort was affected. Let's be honest, this thing is a blast off-road. It's solidly built but accessible. And the 19 inch front wheel means that this bike is so much more road focused than the Hemi and that is a really good thing. There are 
are a couple of things, but I probably need to preface this by saying this is an $8,500 bike that is built to a budget. And for eight and a half grand, this is one hell of a bike. The Tripper is okay, but to be honest, I much prefer the Beeline. For me, it just works a little bit better, but maybe it's because I'm more used to it. There's no center stand, which I always feel is a negative on any bike that has a chain, but also the side stand feels just a little bit flimsy. It actually works okay and I never had an issue with it, but the feeling was not as stable as I would normally like, and I found I kept checking it every time I put the stand down, but that could have just been my OCD. Now the mirrors look ordinary with that angled bit. I've heard the Missenden Flyer describe them as Mickey Mouse, but to be honest, that's probably doing both Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney a disservice. What is it with the angle bit near the top of the stem? If that was just straight to the mirror, they would look so much better. And I'd be surprised if they didn't work better also because they'd be sitting out slightly wider. So if this is my bike, they would be gone. Probably my biggest issue with the Scram 411 is the seat. I know I said I love the look of the seat and I'm not sure if it's just me, but I got some seriously squashed plums after riding for a while. And I'm not talking about the kind you might find in a five day old fruit salad. As I said, I love the look of the seat, but I prefer a flat bench seat or a less of an angle at the back of it because the angle bit kept pushing me forward. One way around it would be to add even more padding, making it a little bit higher. Now I could easily flat foot it, so adding an extra 20 or even 30 mil to the seat height is not gonna make it any less accessible, but it is gonna flatten out that angle at the back of the seat, which should do the trick. It probably wouldn't look as good, but it might save any parental aspirations younger male riders might have. So, just a request to Royal Enfield, please look at a couple of different seat options in the future. Let me know in the comments if anyone else has had this problem with the bike. The grin factor for me on the Scram 411 is a solid eight. Quite simply, it's a fun little bike. There is enough power to sit on the freeway, it's nimble and it's very easy in traffic, and pretty good if you wanna hit some gravel roads, do some light off-roading or some fire trails. What more could you ask of an eight and a half thousand dollar bike? So in my opinion, it's a better bike than the Hemi in so many ways, but it's also a way that Royal Enfield can extend the life of the 411cc engine that was first seen in 2016. The smaller front wheel makes it better bike on road, but as I mentioned, it doesn't affect the rideability and handling off-road. Now I'm no dirt bike specialist, but I really felt comfortable with the Scram off-road. While I had the Scram, I did a little bit of everything on it, commuting where it was really agile, stable, and very easy to filter in traffic. But then I hit the freeway on it, and because of that smaller front wheel and the 14 kilogram weight reduction, it was absolutely fine at freeway speeds, with just a little bit in reserve. On country B roads, like through the Royal National Park on my way to Bundina, it was great, and it handled really well, and you could really throw it into corners and feel like you were riding along at quite a clip, but remaining at road legal speeds. Bundina is a sleepy little suburb on the southern side of Port Hacking, and it's a really beautiful little ride in through the National Park with some really great stretches of road. When you get there, there are quite a few little coffee shops and cafes, so you'll be able to fuel up and caffeinate. There are also some great little beaches and the place is absolutely thriving in summer. I did manage to find quite a few dirt roads while I had the Scram, and I've got to say, this is where I had the most fun with it. Surprisingly more fun than the Hemi. Maybe I was just feeling a little bit more comfortable off-road, but this thing really is a hoot. If I was in the market for a bike to take on the dirt, but would still want to be comfortable riding there on the tarmac, then the Scram 411 would probably be at the top of the list. I just need to sort out something with that seat and off I'd go. Now, there have been some spy shots around of a new version of an adventure style bike from Royal Enfield with what is rumored to be a 450cc engine. And that sounds like it would be great. A few people have mentioned that they'd love to see a version of the Scram and the Hemi with the 650cc engine from the twins. But to me, that would be a completely different bike and at a very different price point. It would be heavier and would also have to have a complete redesign of the chassis. I'm not saying I wouldn't like to see it, but I do think a 650 version of the Scram would be in a completely different category. For now, we've got a great looking agile and accessible bike with a bulletproof engine that has been tried and tested. So why not give it a bit more longevity? Let me know in the comments what you think of the Scram 411. Is it better than the Hemi? Is it in fact a Hemi killer? And what do you think of the styling? If you like this video, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Also check out our online store. We're gonna have some new t-shirts and long sleeve t-shirts available soon. Till next time, stay safe and enjoy your next pie run.